All right, guys, I'm standing here above Gore Bay on Manitoulin Island. I'm gonna be looking for some fossils today because I heard that this is an excellent place to find fossils. Hopefully we find some shells, some bits of coral. I'm not too sure because I haven't been here before. So it's gonna be an adventure for all of us. Hopefully the rain holds out a bit. And we see some cool things. Behind me is a place called Janet Head. This place here has a lighthouse. Locals refer to it as Lighthouse Road. Anyways, I heard there's some fossils there from a friend in Sudbury, right over there. Right over there, there's some fossils apparently. So we're gonna go check them out. Maybe we'll find something cool. Yeah, Janet Head. I love me a good lighthouse. My closest friends know that I just like love to go find lighthouses and chill at them. Damn, this is a beautiful location. I'm gonna scour the beach here, see what I can find for you guys. Fossils are formed in different ways, but most are formed when a plant or animal dies in a watery environment and then is buried by mud and silt. The soft tissue will quickly decompose, leaving behind the hard bones and shells. Over time, the sediments built up over top will harden into rock. All right, guys. So I just scoured the beach for a while. I found a couple fossils, some beginner stuff, I think, but it's kind of cool. Helps give you an idea for what the area was like hundreds and millions of years ago. This used to be a coral reef bed all through here, right down to Tobamori. So I'm hoping uh, we can find some types of little mollusks and stuff. So I found two fossils here. The first one kind of looks like some type of a uh, horn coral or um, maybe a mollusk of sorts. I'm gonna have to look that one up later. And this one's definitely a fossil of a old sea sponge. And there's a bunch of them here. Now like big ones and small ones. I'll take a closer look. So this is what I call the horn coral. And it is actually kind of like a nickname for it. When I found out later. It's got vertical striations going up towards this uh, pointy tip here. It's pretty easy to pick out amongst the rocks. And here, we got like some type of sea sponge coral. <laughs> it's got like this honeycomb looking shape on top. And the interior here kind of has like this cell like structure. Lots of little chambers. So I'm gonna go a bit deeper into the bush and try to find some other fossils, maybe stuff that people haven't looked through already, maybe find something cooler, bigger, maybe something with legs. Maybe something with legs. But I'm gonna leave most of this that I found here because I don't wanna take it all. It's just kind of bad juju, let other people look at it. You know, you don't have to take all the fossils. It's fun just finding them and looking at them. So guys, let's go into the bush. Let's see what we can find. Here we've got a typical beach scene, and there's uh, at least two fossils in there. Can you see them? It's kind of like Where's Waldo. I think they're pretty obvious. That's them there. It's another horn type coral. You can see the vertical striations. This one's in a lot better shape than the other one. And the internal structure there of the horn coral kind of looks like the inside of a, a tooth or some type of vegetable. And there's the bottom half. It's two different parts, but they actually line up. I could tell that they were one. Here's a giant chunk of rock just covered in fossils. All sorts of things like, pff, like a gosh darn Jackson Pollock of fossils. I was told by a friend that uh, these types of fossils occur when a bunch of stuff dies maybe at the bottom of a hill, something's eating them and just leaves like a cache behind. Here's one of the cooler fossils I found. This one here looks like some type of cephalopod. 
Cephalopods have a hard cone-shaped shell with a bunch of different air chambers that grow over time. You can see the horizontal air chambers going up the cone-shaped shell. That was a pretty sweet find. Walking along the beach here at Janet Head and I came across this stone. It doesn't fit in with the rest. It's very porous, dark in color, and almost feather light. That's a volcanic rock. It's the only one I've seen on this whole beach. I have no clue how it got here. So, I scoured the entire beach. And as you can see, I've shown you some of the coolest stuff. And I think it's time to move on to the next place. Let's get going. All right, guys, I made it to a different place. This place is called Goat Island. It's right as you get to Manitoulin Island. You'll know because there's a swing bridge right as you leave it. I got sedimentary rock behind me, layers and layers of it. This stuff is excellent for finding fossils, and I have a feeling we might find something different than what we found down at the beach earlier. Let's check it out. Cool, climbing up the rock face here, I found a fat vein of quartz. Quartz is like a pretty common mineral found throughout the Canadian Shield, and I heard it carries some pretty good vibes. All right, so this place is different. I'm not seeing as many sponges here or that horn coral type stuff I found back at the other beach. But we got all these little tiny tuber type things and uh, there's a lot of them. I'm gonna see if I can find some more. They're pretty cool. Yeah, so I got these tuber type things. They kind of look like, like spines, but, but I don't think they are. Over here on Goat Island, this was the most common fossil I found. And they were scattered throughout, all over the place. It's kind of crazy to imagine that at one point, this was actually the bottom of a shallow subtropical sea. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I think that's it for Manitoulin Island. So as the sun sets, I'm on to the next place. I'm going to Bond Share Caves, and I'm going to meet up with this guy, Scott. And Scott loves fossils. And uh, hopefully we can learn some more. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Stay fly.